We're now going to show you how to make the Shohain shoe. The Shohain shoe has got uh, traditionally got an outside heel and uh, used to have a three quarter inside, three qu quarter length inside, but new guidelines brought out have encouraged the farriers and the breeders and owners to put a full length inside on their hind feet. So Alan's now showing you how to make the outside heel. You can flick this over and weld it if you wish, but they're really, it serves no purpose. Alan's flicked it over, welded it, and now he's setting it, checking it away, we call that away from the frog. You can imagine the frog on the inside of that heel. Usually you would make the shoot the heel square. You'd make the heel square, so the same width of material turned over, so you get a corresponding cube. Now what he's doing is that the purpose, the function of the shoe will discuss during the shoeing process. He's now going to, if you look really closely, you'll see how he's flattened the inside of the inner border down. This actually encouraged the horse to turn its foot out as the heel hits the ground. Now the difference between having a, a, a trailer on a horse's foot and having a heel on a horse's foot, if you have a trailer, just a uh, the portion kicked out, then that will turn the foot inwards. But if you have a heel, it will actually turn the foot outwards. Now work two hammers. If you've got a striker, use them, but be sure that you know, your, you and your striker know how to work together. You can see the sledgehammer is displacing a lot more material than the two pound ham hand hammer. But give you the, the striker time to go in and practice with your striker, and you'll find that it's a much more efficient way of drawing out steel. This is the inside branch that's being drawn out now. Just sweeten up the inside branch, do the final blows with a hand hammer. And uh, traditionally the inside branch should be slightly narrower and thinner than the outside branch. And this allows the horse to turn its hocks in and its toes out. We'll discuss the whys and wherefores in the shoeing chapter. Mark the steel, measure from the inside of the heel to the on the outside to the end of the heel on the inside and mark the middle. This gives you a nice balanced shoe. The hind shoe for a show horse should actually look the same shape as the front shoe. It should be a nice round foot appearance and you tend to when you're trimming the foot give more quarter on the outside. Keep more sh more foot on the lateral branch, the outside branch of the foot. But what is generally overdone is some farriers leave a huge flare on the outside. This is to be totally discouraged. You can see Alan's actually thinning the inside branch now and he's going to punch the nails quite fine towards the outside of the branch of the shoe. This allows really quite close fitting of this shoe. It means that there's nothing on the inside going to stick out because these horses, the horse's hind feet are going to be quite close together or so the breeder hopes. Um, now you can see the nail's been punched quite fine and uh, you'll see why when we, again when we come to the shoeing chapter. If you look at the angle that the Pritchell's going to go in at, it's almost straight up and down, virtually no angulation at all. And this is the same angle as the nails are going to go into the foot with. Just run round the, the, the border, take any little frog eyes out of the, the steel and flatten the nail holes. And you'll notice again that the shoe's being made in two separate halves, just as very similar to the front shoe. He's now forging the outside branch and it, the the, we started off very similar to the same way as we started off with the draft shoe by doing the heel quarter first. He's now balancing up the, the, the shoe and trying to get a nice flow to the branches both inside and outside. You see that he's taking his time, there's absolutely no rush because he's got lots of heat in the outside branch. The shoe almost looks like a question mark. It was developed over the centuries by uh, the horse owners and farriers to suit the Clydesdale horse. Clydesdale horses were first bred 
is a cross between the Shire and the European horse in the Ardennes. And uh, they were developed for the land that's, that's round about only 12 miles from where we're making this DVD just now uh, in a place called Straven in Lanarkshire. And uh, the, the, the land there is very soft and peaty and these horses had to have good solid big feet to stay on top of the land and uh, they were uh, bred to suit the, the terrain with which they worked. And you can see here that uh, Alan's punched the nails very coarse on the outside branch and he's now putting a slight bevel on the outside branch as well just to give the horse an appearance of uh, having a bigger foot, a larger foot on the outside. And again if you're measuring this foot for the size of shoe measure you can see where the nail holes will be going into the wall at the white line so you measure the size of the foot and then put your nail holes accordingly that should be the width of the distance between the nail holes the, again I, I would suggest that this shoe is clipped slightly to the outside so that you can actually see the the clip when you're looking at the, the leg from the front and you'll see this again when we sh come to shoe the horse and watch the horse in locomotion. Again if you look closely when he's drawing the clip he's not moving the, the shoe from the anvil he's using the heel of his hammer to actually draw the clip keeping it nice and thick and strong at the base and uh, a good a nice taper towards the, the tip level the behind the clip that's very important and angle the clip into what would be the same angle as the horse's foot and there you have the completed shoe how it would look from the front and you can see the heel is not too high but just enough to accommodate the mechanics of which we're trying to achieve <laughs>